I tell you the truth, that's one of those little mysteries. We have an idea who did it, but that sax version was never supposed to even get out, unless you know anything better than me. We're speaking of Johnny Cole, his latest record, I hear other voices you picked that up now. I want to circle back to just talking about Mont Lang really quickly, because one of my favorite records from you guys is Hard at Play that came out in 91. And of course, you got back and, uh, you know, he... Um, we collaborated again with Mott, I Hit Me Like a Hammer, which is a pretty big hit for the band at the time. When you go in to record a Mutt Lang song that's pitched to the band or brought to the band, are you going in having to recreate the demo you hear from Mutt? Or as a guitar player, musician, arranger, are you able to do your own thing with it? Mutt makes great demos. I'll just put it that way. He, he, he makes full he, songs. Let's call. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> he, he makes, well, he makes these demos and he throws those demos out there and he sings. He sings the parts in his little tiny voice. And, well, that's another story I got to share with you. And oh, we love that. Demo from Mutt, I mean, if you if you have if you're a band that knows what they're doing, where they want to go, let's face it, we were we were self-produced. It's easy to see that song and go, oh, I know how to make it Huey Lewis in the news. You know, mm-hmm. we do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Oh, this tune, this tune doesn't want horns. This tune wants to be a rocker, you know? Yeah. And by the way. I'm more of a sax player than a guitarist. Yeah. Uh, I gotta let you know. But I have a great Mutt Lang story. Uh, oh, let's hear when it. You, uh, <laughs> when you do TV over in um, England, in the UK, mm-hmm. uh, everything has to be recorded, supposedly. Uh, you can't use your record. You gotta go in. You know this, Mitch? You know about yeah, this? Top of the pops and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. All of those. You gotta go in the studio and you gotta record the track it's going to be used on the show. Well, no one does that. It's all about union and, and following the rules. They do like their rules over there. And so you go in the studio and you just have a bit of fun and, and, and get it done. Then you use your track when the, when the, uh, uh, when the performance happens. Well, you always having dinner with Mutt or whatever. And, and um, we decide Mutt's going to help out with the, uh, with the production of our, uh, of our TV appearance. So oh, get wow. I don't know if you know this, uh, and Mutt, I'm sorry if I'm giving you away, but Mutt likes things just just so, very particular mm. man. Just a little, way. little, little perfect. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, he's a perfectionist. And that's, that's okay. I've got a little, my nickname in the band was The Dentist, so I can understand. Perfect. So uh, uh, so sure enough, we're there and we're recording and it, it's nothing but a good time. We can eat and have fun. So we decided to let Mutt sing the lyrics and we got him out there and we, we poker faced him all the way. We just gagged him all the way. We got him out there and he says, hey, how was that? He says, uh, not bad. The third note could be a little more, a little more gravel. <laughs> God damn it. If he didn't try it, you know, you know then we go, ah, pretty close. The last one was flat. Just bring that one up. Keep the gravel. Started a little earlier. I think you got it, Mutt. And we gagged oh. him. Good four or five minutes. Oh, that's amazing. Do you have that tape of Mutt, like, we, singing it? We put the Mutt on Mutt. Oh, <laughs> I love that. You know, I'm sure it's around somewhere. I mean, all of those recordings, uh, I don't know what happened. And I think they become the property of the shows, you know. Right. Well, talking about that, I mean, uh, just to go back to the demo, I mean, we're talking about archive material. Do you have that, you know, hit me like a hammer demo laying around somewhere with the mutt vocal on it? Right. Can you see that pile down there in the back of my horns? <laughs> yes. Where to go? Well, we just, I'll make the story short. We just folded <laughs> our compound. We don't have a recording or a rehearsal studio anymore. Uh, each band member to the man took all their toys home. Mm-hmm. Right. We had to do that because it, uh, for, uh, cost reasons and lots of stuff like that. I have, there's probably 2,000 cassettes there. And I wow. guarantee you, Mutt's demo is in there somewhere. Oh, uh, we're wow. Have to go through that. It's well, we got to find that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's just been a, a, a hell of a ride here, sorting out all of my stuff, having all my toys in the house mm-hmm. for the first time in almost 40 years. Wow. Yeah. So, you, Jeremy, yeah. your vacation has a new destination. You're going to have to go over there and look for a month. Oh, yeah, Let's I know. Exactly. ask you about It Hit Me Like a Hammer. There are two versions of the song, one with a sax demo, uh, not a demo, a solo, I should say, yeah. and one with the guitar solo. Um, 
was that how you worked on most of the songs where you went, okay, let's just try the, a keyboard solo here and a guitar solo. And, and then did you listen to the versions and go, Ooh, yeah, the guitar one's for the album and the other one, well, whatever. Yeah, we'll send the sax to radio. Yeah. yeah one of those. I'll tell you the truth, that's one of those little trees. We have an idea who did it, but that sax version was never supposed to even get out. Unless you know anything better than me. Well, it did wow. get out. It yeah, did get on, out, and it sounds great. Is it is it on a is it on a bona fide release? It, well, it, says, the, it says the single release had a remix of the song with the sax solo but that didn't appear on the album version. So no, but the um, the, there huh. is a three CD greatest hits that came out that I think has it, and then there's also a greatest hits from Finland that used it. And by the way, that greatest hits from Finland, from Universal Finland, is the greatest sounding Huey Lewis record. They really upped the, their game on remixing oh, and remastering. Really? It sounds Fantastic. terrific. But, I'm but sure both I've got versions it right are out there. there. <laughs> both versions are out there. So, but, okay. but I mean, was that a, a regular process where you got to, uh, you know, whatever, do you believe in love and say, okay, try this breakdown with this instrument, then try it with that instrument, and then we'll, we'll, we'll A, B it and see which one works not very often no, no. that song uh um where the jury was the, the jury was out we didn't know what we wanted to do with it and mm. uh um so we decided to that chris hayes and i would both take a swing at the solo and uh um you know i'm my my production skills trump my ego any day over in the studio so mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was obvious to me it, the tune was a rocker and it needed to be guitar. Right. That's why I never even knew that that was officially released uh, with a sax solo. Right. I love the guitar tone on that. The, the barrel, barrel, barrel. Like it's just so compressed. It sounds like almost like a rockman. Like that production's great. Do you remember what the guitar tone was on that album or that song? I do, I do not. That was, no. uh, those were, some, those were, there were some gray areas in this career, you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I, I love that tone though man that that late 80s compressed studio sound oh it's so yeah. good yeah he might, have been on a, he might have been on a hamer something strange like that i know he played hamer for a while chris did yeah an all new episode of the mitchell fun and jeremy white show tuesday at noon available wherever you stream